Watch me whip, whip, watch me. Now I need mean, oh, watch me, watch me, oh, watch me, watch me. Oh, watch me, watch me. Hi everybody, it's a Sunday afternoon. We thought we'd come to um, Universal Studios Hollywood, see what we could find, have some good food, maybe some cocktails from uh, Mulligan's Pub, and see what things are like inside. Well, and I of course want a hot butter beer with Bailey's. Yeah. That's the cocktail of choice. Always good. <laughs> Anyways, let's go have some fun. Oh, how cool. There's Lucy. Thank you. We were going through the Harry Potter store here in the park, and we saw these pins, which I thought were interesting because I'm used to seeing the word loyalty with Hufflepuff, but not the others. So if you're a Hufflepuff, like Matt, you're patient, to have dedication and loyalty for Hufflepuff. And then of course they have Ravenclaw, which is me, wisdom, learning, and wit. And then there's one Slytherin left, ambition, cunning, and pride. And of course, not a shock, they're all out of the Gryffindors. Yeah, those are always most popular. The how, first to go. And how much are they? They're $12. Yeah, that's something we haven't seen here, these little pens are pretty cool. Yeah. And then while we were here, I heard two little kids, one of them said, oh, it's the um, Tri-Wizarding Cup. And then the other one was like, no, it's the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> and <laughs> then it was funny because the one, of course, it's the Tri-Wizarding Cup. But it was funny when the kids were battling over which was right. And this actually lights up in the stem when you turn oh, the batteries cool. on. And then you can use it to drink out of, I guess, if you can drink around the dragons. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And then to clean it, you just separate it so that the battery oh, part doesn't get wet. And I'm like, no, it's the Monty Python's Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cool. How and this is, is 19.95. Yeah. Nice. It's kind of fun. It's always so cool walking here into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Yeah, they it's magical. Such, it really is. They do such a good job. We've crossed the border into magic. Inside the three broomsticks, and as soon as we walked in, we were immediately uh, hit with a wonderful aroma in here. The food smells so good. There's something about like a barbecue sauce in the air. Yeah, that smells delicious. And that platter comes with chicken and ribs. Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, I think we're smelling ribs, maybe. What do you think you're gonna get, Monica? I don't know. 
I really like the herb chicken, but yeah. the fish and chips was delicious that time I had it. That looks good too. For all we know, we're smelling the turkey leg. Yeah, all oh, looks really good. The shepherd's pie is good. The ribs look good, but I think it's a little too much for me right now. I think I'm gonna order that chocolate, chocolate trifle if it's available. You're right, ribs are too much. We'll just do one apple pie, <laughs> one trifle, and one sticky toffee pudding. Right. <laughs> all right, let's go here and see what we're gonna get. So we just picked up lunch here at the Three Broomsticks. We got kind of a little bit of everything. Got my handy dandy pointer straw. <laughs> You know, we're sort of hungry because we walk into the park and we smell everything and it always smells so good uh, here. Yeah. We really came for the butter beer and my hot butter beer that I adore. And Matt likes the cold butter beer. Oh yeah. But then we haven't reviewed the child's plate yet. So there's two options on the children's menu, chicken fingers or mac and cheese. They both come with the potato wedges and these massive grapes that look delicious. So we'll try that for you guys. And then we don't think we've reviewed this um, chocolate trifle. So you can see the strawberries and the layers in it and things. Yeah, it looks very good. Really cool. I'm a fan of trifle. We recently had some at uh, an English um, pub in Santa Monica. And I used to live in the UK. I lived there for five years. And I, ha I love trifle and I haven't had it yet. So I thought it was nice. He also likes anything that combines fruit of chocolate. Yeah. And so there's this fruit line and strawberries and a raspberry on yeah. top. So he'll probably love this. Yeah. And then I just felt like sticky toffee pudding. I added it on <laughs> at the last minute because, you know, this is us not eating. Yeah, I'm so laughing. That we can eat again later. <laughs> I'm laughing because it seems like no matter what time of day it is uh, or what meal it is, we always end up getting the sticky toffee pudding, right? We just add extra things. And it was, it was funny at the register because um, we ordered all the stuff and I go, there's nothing else, right? And then Monica goes, yeah, why don't we just go ahead and get a we'll sticky toffee pudding? Let's just throw a sticky yeah, toffee yeah. pudding in. It's like no matter what, it's always a good idea. So let's see uh, how these items taste. So I'm going to try the mac and cheese. Peace. It's good. It's creamy. It needs some salt. It's not craft mac and cheese. So hopefully kiddos will accept the look and not be upset. Does uh, it taste better than like something out of a, a box? No. Okay. To me, it tastes like um, like something out of a box, but it doesn't taste like Kraft Mac and Cheese, so it's not going to be what, in my opinion, kiddos are used to having. So, it's okay. okay. Would you get it for your kids if you had uh, children or uh, if someone brought their children, would you recommend it then? Probably, as long as they're not like super picky. If, I mean, parents out there know when their kids only eat the Kraft mac and cheese. Oh, that's true. And like, like for example, like Sizzler restaurant, they have mac and cheese and it's absolutely the Kraft mac and cheese. It tastes like the Kraft mac and cheese. Right. The kids who love the Kraft mac and cheese love yeah. it. This is not Kraft mac and cheese, but it does taste like a box. You're trying to say, his children will be not, not be as discerning as one of Vista Magic in the reviews of the mac and cheese. It depends how picky your child <laughs> right. is on the mac and cheese. <laughs> okay, good to know. I just wanted to chime in really quick. I wasn't planning on reviewing, so I thought Monica um, said, I think, all that needed to be said. But we have a real difference of opinion here when it comes to the taste of this mac and cheese, because this is excellent. I'm not a mac and cheese person. I don't eat it at home, and I usually don't order it. I just want to have something small, so that'd be kind of a nice little plate to share. This mac and cheese is very good. Mmm. The cheese is thick and creamy. It's not runny. And it tastes way better quality than what you get out of a box or a Kraft macaroni and cheese you buy in the store. I said this it was is, creamy. This is excellent. I think that children, of course, will like it. But I think an adult looking for something small will like it too. This is very good. So I just want to let you know, I thought the quality of the mac and cheese was excellent. We just finished eating our macaroni and cheese plate, which I thought was pretty good. And now I'm going to try the chocolate truffle. I think it looks so good. And I can't believe I haven't tried this yet because I like chocolate and I like, I know I said truffle, I meant chocolate trifle. And I like trifle. So let me try this here. Ooh, that looks really good. Mmm. Oh, wow. Let's see the inside. I wonder if you can see the layers. Yeah. 
That chocolate is very creamy and rich. Like a mousse? Yes, like a mousse. It's a really good. Let me get a little bit farther down there and get some of the the cake, some of the trifle traditionally has like sponge cake in it. Trifle. Oh yeah. And that strawberry at the bottom, that is so good. So wait, we've got mousse, strawberry. Mm -hmm. Is that like a strawberry gelée or there's, raspberry gelée? There's a raspberry here, but inside it's strawberry. Okay. Correct, there's actually pieces of strawberry, which you can see right there. Right. Plus like a, a strawberry uh, gel. So that's a so that's a strawberry gelée right yeah. there, right there. Mm -hmm. And then is that a layer of cake on Yes, top? and then the cake is in there too. Oh. Correct. With a little uh, dark chocolate on top, it's really, really tasty. Oh, is the cake limited to just that thin layer that we see above the gelée, or is it there it, more in it? No, it's just a thin layer. But it's very good. It's it, <clears throat> it's the right amount of cake. It tastes really good. I'm gonna go in for one more here, and you can try it, Monica, if you if you like. I know you're not a fan of chocolate and fruit together. Don't put fruit in my chocolate. Yeah. Mmm. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it took me this long to have it. Mmm. It is just that small bit of chocolate. I don't see that small bit of um, cake in here, but it tastes really good. I highly recommend this. So I got this sticky toffee pudding. These from the color are butterscotch chips, these orange pieces. It looks like one melted over here. It's served warm, but it's kind of a cool day, which is why the ice cream hasn't melted very much. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's very hard. That told me I was gonna need a knife. I have more experience with a sticky toffee pudding, I think, than you do. It's true, you have had it and reviewed it before. Okay. The stickiness is for sure along the bottom. Let's see if I can watch the sticky pull up. Mm. There you go. Okay. Very heavy on the cinnamon, which I like. Yeah. It's good. Um, I don't know what the stuffy stuff is, the sticky right here, but it's so good. It's like, um, it's almost like a the gooey part of a cinnamon roll. Right. It's like, it, it has the texture of like caramel, but it's like cinnamon -y, yeah. It's really mm -hmm. good. Maybe it's supposed to be like the straight butterscotch. Right. It, it absolutely could be. It's really good. And those little chips in it are nice too. Is this your first time trying it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's really, really good. I like it. It's dense. It's a really dense cake. Yeah. With a lot of really delicious toppings. It so. goes good with coffee, or I imagine even like your hot um, uh, butterbeer, too, would probably be good with it. And it's very um, traditional English sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. So. Would you try it again? Um. Yeah, I think so. I would. I like it a lot. It reminds me of a cinnamon roll. <laughs> there you go. We're gonna pop into one of our favorite places in the park, Honey Dukes. They have every type of sweet treat, candy, uh, bakery good, goods, and even ice cream here. Dispensers are back. There's something so magical about being able to fill your own bags of candy. <laughs> oh, were they gone for the pandemic? Yeah. So oh, nice. So empty. But okay. The ones in the green are back. Oh, and you nice. Can just pull it down to fill a bag. Oh, very cool. So while we're looking at the baked goods here, Monica noticed something over here in the corner that we haven't seen before. Well, and I don't know if these are new, but these um, candy jars are so fun. They're on like a little pedestal, and they're filled with candy. And then once you eat all this candy, you could refill it with new candy. Nice. How much do they go for? These are $25. And they come with different varieties of candies in them. That one looks like, like it's like lemon heads or lemon, lemon drops. Sours, yeah. This one looks like sour balls. Oh my god, that looks so good. <laughs> I love sour balls and like jelly beans. Very cool.
So for a Sunday night, it's pretty busy. You can tell it's a weekend crowd, but I think it's worse on Saturdays. It's not shoulder to shoulder. We're not really much ones for construction updates here on our, uh, on our channel. But you can see they're coming along there with the uh, construction of um, Super Nintendo World there. Definitely more than when we were here last. And then down here in between these two buildings, let me see if I can get it there in frame. There it is. It's a black tent that they're setting up and that's gonna be one of the um, Halloween Horror Night mazes. And I tell you what, the HHN that Monica and I came to um, this past year was really one of the best Halloweens I've ever had. I, I still talk about how, how much fun it was. And I hadn't been to one, geez, in years uh, prior to that. So I'm really looking forward to the one in 2022. And I hope these mazes are just as good, if not better, than the ones last year. So this is Vivo. They have a really nice bar. Monica and I just ordered a few cocktails. It was a 20 minute wait for a table, but they've got this bar that you can just come and sit at. Right. And you can see their kitchen there. And they uh, do really good pizzas. <laughs> And like Monica said, it was a 20 minute wait if we want to wait for a table, but the open sitting at the bar is um, come and get it if it's available. And so we're sitting here and we eat at this bar and get drinks here all the time. And it, the food is always good. The drinks are wonderful. And I know that after we eat in the park, because we eat a lot, we shouldn't be here, but we like this place so much. And we're so happy when it reopened after the pandemic that we have to stop and eat here. <laughs> And I ordered a El Clasico um, Old Fashioned. And what did you order, Monica? Just a glass of red wine. Oh, okay. Just a glass of red wine. The Old Fashions here are excellent. And I do love that little bit of orange rind. And this is why I like it here so much. They actually get the rind and they rub it on the rim like you're supposed to. These Luxardo cherries are so good. Yeah, Monica's addicted to these Luxardos. He was generous with the sauce too. Yeah, such a great cocktail. Excellent. Thank you, sir. There you are. Thank you. What kind of wine did you get, Monica? Oh, I think it's pronounced Bianchi or Bianchi. What I mean is, did you get a, a, a Cab or a, a Merlot or? You know, it didn't say. It just oh, okay. said red from Paso Robles and it was a Bianchi. Or okay. Bianchi, I don't know. So our food just arrived. And what did you get there, Monica? I got the fettuccine Alfredo with chicken. And I love it here because they put those fresh English peas in there. Oh yeah. It looks delicious. And of course the pasta is homemade too. Oh yeah, they make their pasta here in-house. So it's yeah. really good quality. Um, I had, I just ordered two appetizers, but they're large. They're house-made meatballs. And they're stracchino bread, which has olive oil and cheese on it, garlic. And it comes with a grilled lemon and some arugula. Yes. Monica's getting some fresh Parmesan. Perfect, thank you. A little bit on the meatballs too, please. That's good right there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. The service is so good here, and it goes so good with our cocktail, with well, my cocktail and her wine. I can tell you that Monica um, said she believes uh, her wine is a cab. She has since tried it and really likes it. And I'm gonna tell you what, this cocktail here, um, it's made with Woodford Reserve bourbon. It is really good. They were not skimpy with the bourbon. It's a really good cocktail. So we've tried a little bit of our dinner. And let me tell you what, this restaurant does, does not disappoint. And 
never has, and tonight is no different. What did you think about your dish, Monica? My dish was really good. I um, really enjoy their fettuccine sauce and their pasta, and their chickens always cook perfectly. I would add a little bit of salt. Um, I didn't have the guts to ask for salt, but otherwise, everything was perfect with it. And then your bread with arugula, like, I don't know if you can see, but like right there, that's a little piece of salt melting with the dressing. And right there's a little piece of salt dressing, uh, melting with the dressing. And it's reflecting those little circles. And those little bursts of salt that they put in their salad is so good. Right. Those like, like, this attention to detail is what really makes this restaurant stand out to me. It really does. Let me tell you, um, this bread, uh, when she talks about attention to detail, like the little details, they gave us a piece of, um, or a slice of grilled lemon uh, to put on here. And just having the lemon grilled a little bit gives it a little bit of um, that grill flavor. It, it's really good. This bread is so soft with cheese in it, with a garlic and olive oil on it. It's fantastic. And these house-made uh, meatballs, they're cooked like just perfect. They're cooked all the way through, yet they're soft. You can tell they mix into that the uh, meat, all kinds of stuff, like bread and um, uh, cheese. It's just so good. We've, we've been here now maybe, I don't know, six to eight times, and it's always just uh, like a four-star experience here. We've never been disappointed. It's always good, service is great, and the food is just, uh, you know, it, it's beyond what we can get at other restaurants where we live. It's really wonderful. If you're out here on City Walk, give this restaurant a, tr a try. The um, prices are reasonable uh, for very good quality food, and it is very good quality here. I love this little central section of uh, City Walk at night. There's a fountain here that the kids can run through, even on cool nights like this when they're feeling super adventurous and their parents uh, are, uh, aren't quick enough to stop them from running through. <laughs> and there's a big dragon up there looking down at everybody. Just a really cool little area to go shopping, have dinner, and relax uh, before or after your day in the park. The kids love it here. <laughs> it's such a like vacation vibe. Like, yeah. Even us, we live here. Hi everybody. We're out here at City Walk. We're ending our day at the park and at City Walk. We had a really good time. It was a short trip into the park, but it was worth it. It was a lot yeah, of fun. And right behind Matt, I don't know if you can see it. They're opening a new chocolate restaurant. And get in there. they're doing the construction now, and they've got go. images of the food up on the sides and stuff. Yeah. So they've got one in Orlando. We've never been, right. but we've heard really good things. So we're super excited I for them to it, open, too. I think it's called Toothsome's Chocolate Factory. Chocolate Emporium, babe. Chocolate Emporium, there we go. And Savory Feast Kitchen. Yeah, it should be good. I like chocolate. And I like savory feast, so. I like savory feast. Yeah, we should be good. Yeah. So anyways, thank you for watching. We love doing this and sharing our uh, adventures out with you guys. Um, if you can, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you again real soon.